All right, hello everybody. Um, welcome to another uh, edition of the MakeCode Arcade Advanced Stream. Um, my name is Richard. I'm at Richard on the MakeCode forums. I'm Joey at J Wonderall on the MakeCode forums. I'm Shannon. I'm at Shakal on the MakeCode forums. I'm Daryl at Darzu on the MakeCode forums. Cool. What are we doing today, guys? Um, so we we finished up our Falling Duck um, remix over the past that we did last week. So um, we're going to start up to something new. Um, so, yeah, someone want to say what we're doing? We're going to make a, we're thinking about making a game idea generator, something that creates a random setting and maybe purpose and, and some other things for a game. And then we could use that in future streams to create all kinds of games. Wait, so we're making a game that makes other games? <laughs> Just the idea generation. You saw okay, because that could get like, wildly out of our control, I feel like. <laughs> if we did that, that would be, that would be pretty amazing. All right, well, let's, let's start a new project. Um, so actually, before we do that, let me see if I have um, the game generator that uh, Shannon did a little while ago. Oh, yeah. So if you guys watched our stream on how to make a one room jam, um, you might have seen at the very beginning, we had something that generated some, you know, random concepts. Nope. I think that's just the game. <laughs> yeah. All right. I don't, I don't have it at hand, so we'll just have to uh, no worries. <laughs> remember. But yeah, so um, I, if I remember correctly, that that game generator that you made, um, it came up with a <coughs> a room um uh like gameplay elements and like a mix in type thing yeah it was like an adjective and then like a location and then like the like yeah some game mechanic okay so let's start out by defining the parts of the game that we kind of want to uh you know generate so um get comments going here <laughs> and um what's a what's a good number of uh things um, by the way, I think the way that I'm envisioning this game right now is that we're going to have like a bunch of different sections and then a roulette going by of different ideas, and then it'll uh -huh. stop on each of the ideas and kind of, you know. Yes. Yeah. Um, um, so environment, I think, is a pretty good one for now. Like... OK. What about like a game genre? I also think we should have some sort of wild card thing. I think that is great. Uh, like the the random element that um, Shannon you know, had. So that's just like one game mechanic that has to be in the game, basically, right? Yeah, either game mechanic or like a twist. <laughs> like, you know, it has to, I don't know, uh, somehow involve monkeys or some something. Uh, okay. Just kind of out there. Um, what about, um, so uh, Shannon mentioned an adjective. So just mm -hmm. kind of an idea, this could be something like fast paced or slow or mm -hmm. something something like that, that just kind of sets the mood of the game. Yeah. Um, That's a great idea. Mm -hmm. Anything else? I feel like five is a good number, but if that's too many. I think more is better in a way. Um, I think it could lead to some interesting things. We could start with four, and then if like we generate an idea and we're like, oh, this could actually do with like a little more specificity somewhere, we can add in the. Um, right. Unless someone has something off the top of their head. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking characters somehow, but yeah, we can get to that later. Okay. So um, this stream is going to be a really great um, uh, chance to show off how you can kind of do text in um, MakeCode. So it's it's kind of pretty tough to do it in blocks right now. Um, the main mechanism that we have is this thing called Sprite Say. So let me create a sprite real quick, and I'll show off how that works. Um, but I'm gonna I'm gonna say we should try something a little different. So um, <clears throat> got my duck. Um, if I drag out a Sprite Say block, and I call it on my duck, it will say Happy Face. And so you get this little bubble that appears. Um, if the text is really long, it'll uh, scroll. 
And I mean, that's kind of nice for having characters say things, but we want to be able to control, I think, like the look of the text and also, you know, what the, what the background looks like. Um, so uh, there's another way to do text in MakeCode, and I'll show that off real quick. Um, this is uh, also something that I, I don't think we should use. So there's Splash, which will just take over the screen and say something to us. And this will freeze the game until you press A, and then it keeps going. Um, and then we also, for longer text, for things like instructions, we have this show long text, which by just putting a bunch of random text, um, it will lay it out and actually try to do line breaks and stuff for me. And if I have multiple pages, I can keep pressing A and I'll just keep paging through. Mm -hmm. um, so these are all, all great and they're kind of built in solutions for a lot of the common text scenarios, but we want to have text that's moving around and that's dynamic. Um, and so to do that, we're going to draw the text directly. Um, and so uh, let me uh, show, uh, well, let me just get started. So I'm going to create a function, and I'm going to call this um, create text. And this create text is going to take in a um, text argument. And this will be a string. <clears throat> and so we don't have any ways to create text sprites by default, but it's actually pretty easy to do once you know about the APIs. So um, inside of the images category, we do have a, a um, <clears throat> API for printing text? Do we not? Joey, am I wrong? I don't think we have a block for it. I know we had an extension that added that a while ago from uh, Alex. Ah, OK. Which makes okay. Hard. Well, then we'll probably have to use Sprite Say unless we want to move to JavaScript. What do you guys think? In the text category, there isn't anything. Nope. No. This is something we're looking to improve in um, Arcade. Um, we could, just, yeah. We could show people how to add an extension if there is an extension. an extension. I don't know what the state of any of these text extensions is right now, though. Um, I mean, I could make an extension on the fly. <laughs> Actually, so yeah. I'm going to create this thing called custom.ts, and I'll publish this extension afterwards so you guys can use it, too. Um, OK, wait, can we, can we go back? to what that was, maybe slower? Oh, OK. So I went into Explorer. I pressed plus, which let me add a file to um, my project. This one I'm calling custom.ts. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I'm going to define some blocks real quick. So um, I'm going to be typing a lot of code. Um, you guys can explain it if you want. I'm just going to try and go really quickly, OK? Sounds good. I'll try and narrow it. OK, <laughs> so he's creating a namespace, and in Text-based coding namespaces are really useful for organizing things. And in Arcade specifically, uh, namespaces are going to correlate directly with uh, how the um, the block he's creating is going to show up in the toolbox. So in the toolbox, there's like text and sprites and all those different things. So the namespace is going to be uh, help figure out which, um, which toolbox category it goes into, probably a new one, based on what he's, uh, he's called a word. And we don't have something called word yet. So now he's making a function. And like we saw in previous streams, functions are just a way of sort of grouping some code together. And it's like making your own block. So right now, he's literally making his own block by making a function. But he's doing it in a text language. So it's going to look a little bit different. Um, but it's conceptually the exact same thing as the other functions that uh, we've been using in the other streams. And at the top of the function, he's created four variables, uh, font, width, height, and res. If you watch our falling duck, you saw us create lots and lots of variables. And this is really the same thing. It's just instead of using um, you know, the side menu and clicking some buttons to create variables, he's, uh, he's typing them out in text. And the const is, is short for constant. And it, um, it's basically it's creating a variable that can't be changed after it's set, which is um, technically not a variable at that point uh, by some measures. But um, it's it's uh, essentially the same thing as the variables that we saw. Um, and so let's see, what is he doing? He's picking a font. So um, because this is arcade, we're limited to 120 by 160 screens. So the sizes of the text that we can have is pretty limited. So font 8 says that each of the characters is 8 by 8. Um, each character in the font. And then the width 
So this is going to be the uh, actual text that's displayed on the string or on the screen is going to be you know eight characters, the the font width, uh, multiplied by the length of the string. So if you say hello, you know H E L L O, that's five characters. That's going to be five times eight. That's going to be forty width. Um, the height comes straight from the font, and then. Let's see, he's creating an image, which is just um, something that's going to be displayed uh, on the screen. And um, he's setting it to the width and height of like the text area. He's filling it with background color, and then he's printing in some text there. And we can see it on the little simulator, actually, right now. Yeah, so I just kind of showed it off there. I had this little hello block. Um, so basically, I'm just creating an image. I'm drawing the text to the image, and then I'm creating a sprite that uses that image. And I've passed in three parameters. They are the text, the um, background color, and the foreground color. So two is uh, red, five is yellow. So we get this um, ketchup and mustard flavored hello. <laughs> um, awesome. So I love it. Kind of at a higher level, what happened was this um, red stop print function, right? That's something that you can't do in blocks, but you can do in JavaScript. Um, and since right. the block that you see in the blocks workspace is just representing some JavaScript, what we did is we went into JavaScript and we called this function, and now we're just going to make a block that does that. Yep. And so that's what this slash slash percent block is. This is the uh, magic uh, glue that'll turn this into a block that will show up in our project. And let's go see that right now. Um, so if I go back to main.ts and then go to blocks, there we go. Should see. Yeah, the word category on the left. Yeah, right there. Ooh. So got this one right here, create text sprite. And this returns a value, and that returns our sprite. So if I set awesome. my sprite to create text sprite, do hello again. I'll do pink for the foreground. Well, pink for the background, and then uh, green for the. <laughs> Don't worry if three doesn't sound like pink to you. <laughs> Richard has all of the colors memorized, but there's only yep. 16 of them, so it's not too hard to do. So there you go. We have a very difficult to read hello. Um, and then the cool thing about this is that because this is a sprite that we've created, um, even though it doesn't have um, the image kind of the normal sprite API that we usually use, um, we can do all of the things we normally do with sprites. So if I were to um, uh, attach the controller. Oh, yeah. Well, I can make the hello move around. Yay! Nice. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, cool. Well, I don't think we'll need any other extra blocks. I think that's literally all we need for this this kind of game that we're making right now. So um, just leave it at that, I guess. That was a very um, cool on the fly block creation. <laughs> also, way to go I, commentating. I would have done this before the stream. <laughs> all right, back to our usual affair, which is blocks programming. <laughs> um, so, like I said, I, I was kind of imagining this this being a roulette, um, but because the text is wide, um, it probably makes sense for it to be going like sideways instead of down, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so you could have a lot of text just spinning through, and then it stops on one mm -hmm. in the x direction. Yeah. So um, let's go ahead and create our first category, and then we'll um, generate the animation for one of them, and then we'll make it work for all of them. Does that sound Great. like a good game plan? Quick yeah. request, can you make the text readable? <laughs> oh, sorry. Um, yeah, I, I will, I'll, I'll keep it as, um, let's see, background is black, um, foreground is white. And then we can um, change the colors yeah. later. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. OK, so um, I'm going to use an array to keep uh, track of all of our different items. Um, so I'll drag out this one right here, set text list, just because it already has the string blocks filled in for me. Um, and I'm going to add a few more options. And so um, I'm going to just choose the easiest one of these, I think, to fill out, which is game genre. Um, so let's start with game genre. Um, shout some out. Adventure. Racing. Shooter. Escape the room. <laughs> I don't think escape the room is a game genre. <laughs> it's not. Uh, 
Nah, that's not a very actionable one. Puzzle? Ooh, puzzle's good. Text? I don't know if we want to go there. <laughs> yeah, well, let's leave it at this for now, and we can um, and brainstorm more. Um, and I'm going to uh, rename this variable to be uh, genre list. All right, so basically we want to create sprites for um, all of these different options. And then we want to have those sprites kind of animate through in a little nice little animation. Um, and we can kind of choose what that'll look like um, later, but that's the basic idea. So I'm going to create a function to create a, um, a sprite for uh, you know our um, roulette wheel or slot machine. So this is going to be um, create Roulette sprite. I hope I spelled that correctly. Um, and I'm going to, uh, I think there might be two of us. No, you got it right. I think you're right. Yes. Yeah. Right. Um, my English teacher would be so proud. Um, I'm going to pass in two arguments. The first one's going to be text. And so that's just going to be the string that we're displaying. Um, and then the second one is going to be an offset. And so we're going to have multiple layers of these. So I want to use this one function for all of them. And so by doing it with this, I can pass in this offset to make it appear at a certain y value. So um, let me give it actually a, a little more descriptive name. We'll call it y. Sounds great. OK. So when we're creating a roulette sprite, you can just copy this one right over here. Um, and I'll get rid of that move my sprite because I'll be in here now. And we'll call this. So um, with my function, those two parameters that I just defined are now local variables that I can pull out of the block. So instead of doing hello here, I'm just going to drag out the text. And because we also have a Y, we want to set the Y value for our block. So I'm going to go into the sprites category because this is a sprite. You can drag out this set property block, change it to roulette sprite, change the um, thing that we're altering to Y, and I'm going to drag this Y argument and put it in here. And let's test out this code. Cool. Nice. So. Um, you might have noticed something real quick right here. When I when you set it to zero, the text is actually cut off. And um, the reason that is is because we um, the y value in a sprite actually refers to its center. So when you're setting it at zero, it'll be half off the screen and half on the screen. Um, so sometimes you want to use top instead or bottom. Um, those are sometimes easier to reason about, but it doesn't really matter right here. So I'm just going to keep using that. But um, these left, right, top, and bottom are very useful. Um, all right, so we've got our sprite. Um, we want, however, uh, for it to move. So let's go ahead and set the velocity too, and the position. Uh, well, we're just in the Y. We'll set the X and the velocity. Start it on the um, left side of the screen. Actually, let's start it completely off screen. Um, so to do that, um, we can just use the width of the sprite. So I'll drag. You can also this. set the right to zero, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's way better. And right after I was giving the explanation. <laughs> um, and I'm going to set the vy to zero because we're going to have them moving horizontally. And I need to change this variable because it's very unhappy with me. And woo, we got the ABC going across the top. Nice. Awesome. Cool. There's one other thing we want to do real quick, which is um, we want to destroy the sprite when it gets off the screen. Um, normally, we use the auto destroy um, flag to do that. But because we're starting off screen, that means it would be destroyed when it's off the screen at the very beginning. Mm -hmm. um, so instead, um, I'm going to use an on game update. 
to do that. So if we go into game, grab out an on-game update. I'm going to loop over all of the roulette sprites um, and just one little bit of um, hackery. I don't know if you guys noticed while I was making the block, but um, I actually set all of the sprite types to food. Nice. So we're going to be looping over the food sprites, but pretend it's pretend it's text. Um, if this was a real extension, I could define a sprite kind, but it, you can't do that in just a project. So, um. yeah. I mean, you could also set the kind inside of your your other function that you just made. Oh yeah, that's true. Let's do that actually. That'll make it a little more explicit. So I'll drag out a set kind block. Up. And I'm going to add a new kind, and we'll call it text sprite, or just text. I feel like that'll conflict with something, though. I think text sprite's fine. All right, it's a little redundant, but okay. So um, I'm going to drag out this array of all sprites block and put it inside of our for loop. This. And I'm going to change it to text sprite. So this will execute a piece of code for every text sprite we have. And we want to destroy our sprite when it gets to the um, when it's off the screen. So um, inside of the scene category, there is a screen width block. Um, you can also just know the screen width. Um, in arcade, the screen is always always 160 pixels wide. Um, but you know, this makes it a little easier to read, and it makes it so that you have fewer magic numbers in your code. Um, does someone want to explain why magic numbers are terrible? One of you two. I feel like I've been doing a lot of talking. Uh, generally, it just makes it harder for anybody else to read your code is one thing. So if they're looking at it and they see 160, they might not know that that's the screen width. But if they see the variable screen width, they'll have like context for what it actually is. Right, because if you just had 160, it's like, uh, is that specific to their game, or is that you know related to something else in their code, or is that a velocity or a width, or what is it? So it's good to name numbers. All right, so if the left of the sprite is greater than the screen width, we are going to destroy it. And we won't actually see this happening, but it happened. You can trust me. <laughs> and it's also nice to use left there instead of uh, X position so that it doesn't destroy itself halfway off the screen. Yep. Yeah. All right, so um, this is a good start. So let's create a, um, a game update thing to create all of our text sprites automatically. Um, awesome. So I'm going to drag out an on-game update every uh, 500 milliseconds. That's fine for now. And I'm going to need um, an index of where we are in this list. So we want to do it you know, just one after the other. Um, and we'll have um, just an index kind of going alongside our array that will keep track of this. Um, so oh, I see. So you know which one. Um, is the current choice? Yep. So we'll start it out at 0. And every time we spawn a new one, which is going to happen right here, we will set the genre ind index to a genre index plus 1. And this is something I feel like we talk about every string, every stream. But um, we're also going to use the math remainder of block. Um, so the remainder of block is extremely useful for when you're looping over a list because it makes sure that you will never um, get to the end of the list if you put the uh, list's length in this um, divide uh, argument. Um, mm -hmm. It'll always wrap back around, which is a very useful property. So that would be in the text category. Or no, it would be in the arrays Arrays. category. Yeah. Yeah. Length of array. Oops. Uh, 
We want to add one. Okay, so let's take my little um, test call of this function before, and we'll put it inside of here. And we want to um, get the current value at the index. So. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. Um, so let's go into the uh, arrays category again. And we're going to use this get value at block. Change this to our genre list. And I'm going to use the genre index um, number. And we'll just leave the offset as right now. So don't we want the current pick to be the one in the center of the screen, not, um, not like the leftmost one? Hmm? But we don't have to map the genre index to the current pick. We could just freeze. I see. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know okay. if you had a plan in mind for. I'll let yeah, Richard we'll... keep going. I think it'll make sense. Yeah, I think it'll work out. OK, so I'm going to change this. Two seconds is way too long. Mm -hmm. One second. Maybe a little faster? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. Um, so we set the velocity here. Let's up to 100. And now we can even make it a little faster. Maybe 150. Cool. Like You know what, though? I think it's a little too easy to choose the one you want with this. Uh, Master. <laughs> well, it could have a delay after you hit pause. It slowly oh, ramps down the speed, upper. right? <laughs> what, what if when the, um, you know, the person hits hits the A button or whatever, it doesn't pick right away. It, it slows it down and then eventually stops. Sure. Yeah. So then um, you have to be really. I'm going to put that as a reach goal because that sounds like a lot more code. But I think, I think <laughs> okay. it's a very good idea. <laughs> okay. Um, so we've got our um, list spawning. It's spawning extremely quickly. Um, and the idea is that when you press A, whichever one is closest to the center, or, or if we do the wind down thing, whichever one um, as it winds down will. Um, We'll eventually select one. So let's go ahead and just drag out a controller A block right now um, uh, on controller A pressed. So and we're going to have to um, create another variable here to keep track of, of where we are in this, um, uh, just where we are in, in terms of uh, which list we're currently picking from. So we have an uh, index that is indicating which list is we're like we're currently um, the position in the current list, but we also want to keep the position in the lists of lists, if that yeah. makes sense. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I'm going to call this category index. And I'm going to go back to our on game update. And I'm going to wrap this in a um, if category index equals zero, because that's going to be our genre. Should it be less than one? Hmm? For... Oh, no, it, it's fine. Like everything above the category index will still will be stopped, right? Yes. Oh, I see what you're saying. Um, yes, you're correct. That is that's the the correct logic because we're going to in this on a button pressed, we're going to change that variable by one. So I'll go ahead and drag out this change category index by one. And now when I press A, it should stop. Cool. 
All right. And now for now, we're just going to put whatever we selected when this happened um, at the uh, just center of the screen and lock it there. Um, and then we'll do the spin down thing once we've kind of got the rest of the logic going. I'm going to be pretty disappointed if we don't get to that, though, because it's going to look way cooler with that. So I'm going to duplicate the, uh, let me scroll over here. I'm going to duplicate this comparison. And I'll actually put it above the change. And we'll say if the category index equals zero, we're going to um, create a, a text sprite that is going to be our selected one. So I'll drag out another call function. Or actually, I'll just create a text sprite directly because we don't want it to animate. And we will set it to whatever the um, current genre index is. So this right here, the genre list get value at genre index. Yep. And let's see if this works. Cool. So we chose racing that time. Got shooter that time. Yeah, cool. That works. Um, all right, awesome. And so the genre index is always pointing to whichever one we created last. That's why I put the uh, genre index above this cre call create roulette sprite. Mm -hmm. um, so that if we use the genre index, it'll be whichever one was last spawned onto the screen. All right, so we've got one category down. Let's go ahead and get it started for the rest. Um, so we're going to have to start filling out some arrays. We'll keep them short for now, and then we can brainstorm later. All right. All right. Adjectives. Haunted? Yes. Relaxing. Hey. <laughs> you guys just keep doing better versions of the words I'm currently typing. Um, OK, fast, haunted, relaxing. Um, Colorful. Real. All right, that's good for now. Um, and we can go back and do some more later. Yeah. All right. Um, next one is environments. And I know I made a misspelling there. Underwater is a solid one. <laughs> Space. Space. <laughs> uh, city. Castle. Dungeon. Castle and dungeon are pretty close. Yeah. Forest. Jungle. Forest. I'm going to put forest and jungle. <laughs> wow, places is easy. <laughs> Can you also put no. ruins? Any other strong requests? No. <laughs> Home? Tundra. <laughs> yeah. Tundra so I'm going to move off to the left so that um, it doesn't start overlapping our other good. Awesome. OK. And then um, our final list, so far at least, is going to be the wild card game mechanic. So do this again. And we'll create a new variable called wild card list.
So the wild card that we ended up doing with a, was a time limit, I think. Mm -hmm. um, um, I think Daryl suggested must include. <laughs> um, I like break things. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, build things. <laughs> I love it. Protect. <laughs> like an escort. <laughs> uh, I think we'll do uh, defend. Defense. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Design. Yeah, I was thinking about that draw or something. Or yeah, I feel like design is pretty vague. Um, yeah. Let's mm -hmm. see. Create things. Is that too similar to build things? Yeah, I was thinking more like well. So what I had in mind was sort of like Daryl's like draw like. Like you customize a thing, or I don't oh. know. <laughs> uh, maybe single button. Oh yeah, that's a good one. Okay, one more. <laughs> Joey, I feel like Joey. This is... Huh? Multiplayer. <laughs> All right. Got our lists. Um, so now we're also going to have to create indices for all of these. Um, Man, some, some of these are going to be tough if we get these combos. Well, <laughs> and the fun is you can just you know keep going until you get something you like. Yeah, we make the rules. <laughs> so I'm making the conscious choice here not to use double arrays, just because that can get really ugly in blocks. Um, mm -hmm. Presumably, I could create an array of string arrays and then also have an array of indices, and this code might look a little cleaner in text, but in blocks, it'll be a total mess. So I'm just going to create variables for all of them. Um, Do you I actually was a little need a separate joke. index? Hmm? Do you actually need separate index variables? Don't you only care about one at a time? They're different lengths. Yeah, oh. uh, that's a fair point, actually. Well, I guess if you want them all animating at once, you might need them all. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. OK. Um, they don't necessarily all have to be animating at once, if that would be easier to. It'll look cool, though. Yeah, it'll look cool. All right, so this will be. Um... What? Oh, I think you made one before you deleted you did. the other one. Oh, here. <laughs> Um, this one will be uh, adjectives. adjectives. I do whatever order I want. All right. <laughs> um, we also don't need to set these to zero. So all number variables are implicitly set to zero by main code. Um, but we are uh, just making our code a little cleaner or easier to um, read. No, not read. All right. Cool. So now I'm basically going to duplicate this little bit of code for um, all of our things. Um, I could actually pull this out into a function, and I'm going to do that real quick. Oh, wait. Well, we don't have string array arguments. So no, I'm not. Um, instead, we'll just duplicate this bunch. Mm. Oh, no, I don't want an else if, right? Yeah, just string to right. OK, so genre. Next will be um, adjective. We might actually want to reorder these later. Yeah. Do 
Cool. Um, and so the last one was at 50. Um, I happen to know that the font is eight pixels high, so um, I'll do 60, and hopefully that'll give us a nice little bit of padding. Also, not um, category index, adjective list get value at. Uh, yes, adjective index. And this wasn't running for some reason. Uh, it showed an error, but it didn't see one. What? Did you see an error? I thought I saw one pop up at the bottom. I, I think the error was just, yeah, check your code for errors. Maybe try taking out that second if. Mm. Hopefully this so right now what we're doing is called debugging, <laughs> um, which is when there's something wrong with your code and we're trying to figure out exactly where it is. Um, um, I'm going to refresh. All right. This feels like a random array bug to me. Um, yep. Happen to know that sometimes you just need to refresh when you're dealing with arrays. Um, this is actually a book that's probably fixed on beta, because um, I fixed a host of these. But um, I'm using the uh, released website right now instead of beta. All right, cool. Well, now we got these two lists going. Um, so let's do that two more times. And we'll make this one 70. Cool. Now I got three. Oh, and they're like nice and synchronized. Yeah. Haunted school RPG is pretty good. <laughs> yeah, I'd play that. <laughs> OK. And then the last one is the wild card, right? And we'll set this one to 80. Cool. Ooh. <laughs> All right. So um, let's go ahead and uh, do the, the logic for the rest of it. So again, it's just going to be duplicating a bunch of things. So except this time, we can use else ifs. So I will do that. Zero, one, two. This will be adjective list, adjective index. Um, environment list, environment, oh, not category index, environment index. And then the last one. Wildcard list and wildcard index. And we also want to set the Y position of these. Um, so I'll do that real quick. Um, this one I'm going to cheat with, or not really cheat, but I'm going to um, not duplicate the code a bunch. So I'm setting them all to this roulette sprite. So I'll set the roulette sprite right here. And if you looked at our top one, it was at 50. So I'm going to do 50 plus fun fact on these set blocks. Um, or 
Oh, can you not do that? I thought you could right click on these and get a git. I think that was taken out. Uh, not this is change. Oh, it's change, right. Yeah. Um, Yep. And it was 10 times the category index. So now we should be able to X, uh, X to Y. y. Yeah. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> bup, 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 bup. <laughs> Adventure, oh, colorful wait. castle, collect things, collect things, collect things, collect things, collect things. <laughs> really uh. important. I think you want one more condition there, right? Instead of the else. Uh. Oh, yeah, it's a little tougher than that. Yeah, I think I'm just going to wrap this whole thing. Oh, whoops. Not like that. Um, I'm just going to wrap this whole thing in an if statement. Yeah. And we'll say if it's less than, what is it? Four. Cool. Adventure, colorful castle, collect things. Yeah. Yeah. So I think we need to. Um, there's two things I think we could do here. One, we should probably reorder these so that adjective is first because um, yeah. that would make a lot more sense. Um, so let me go ahead and do that real quick. Um, it's pretty easy to do. I'm just going to drag out this, change the order of these guys. Should we have a little like Beginning. heading above? Maybe the wild card one, or we could lead into each one, right? So it could be like in a castle, but mm. colorful puzzle space moral dilemma. <laughs> uh, <laughs> All right. Great. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, so now we've got our little roulette effect, and we've got our um, selecting values. So I think what we want to do now is kind of just uh, figure out how to link these together and make it a little clearer what the purpose of this thing is. Um, so one thing we could do is by putting um, the explanatory text. So if we put a little bit of space between these ones so that we could have another row of text in between them, we could maybe put a heading over here, over to the left, that says something like, make a perplexing platformer set in Tundra with featuring, featuring multiplayer, something mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. All right, so let's go ahead and create those, those headers. And this is where we can have a little more fun with the colors. So um, this on start is already looking pretty big. So I'm going to create a function just um, not because we're going to reuse this code, but just to chop it up a bit. Um, so what should we call this? Create headings. Create headings. And before I forget, I'm going to call this function. So um, we need to space out these rows of text that we have right now. Um, so before I was just hard coding the values, let's go ahead and just make it a little more explicit. So um, I'm going to create two variables here. Um, the first one is going to be um, top heading position. Um. Offset? Yeah. All right. Call it that. Top heading offset. Well, uh, oh, the top head. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and we're going to create another variable, and this is going to be um, line height. And let's go ahead and set those two. So the reason I'm putting these in variables is so that we can use them in multiple places in our code. And also that we can um, tweak it really easily if we decide that it doesn't look good. Mm 
let me just set the top heading offset. So this is going to be how far from the uh, top of the screen the first heading is. Um, so I'm going to set it to 20. And then for line height, we've been using 10. And I think that looks pretty good. Right, so let's change our other code real quick. Um, so before we were adding 50, this is now this variable has now been replaced with the um, uh, what did I call it? I just named it. Top heading offset. That one. Top heading offset. And then this has been replaced with line height, but this isn't going to be quite right. We're actually going to have to um, do a little more with it. So. OK, so now when these um, choices are being created, they're created 20 pixels from the top, 10 bit pixels in between. This doesn't leave any room for our headings. So we actually want to um, do two lines for each of these. So to do that, I'm going to grab a um, math block, the times, and we will do category index times 2. Or wait, that's not right. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, I think so. I mean, it will work. <laughs> you want to multiply the sum of those to the. Oh, right. I think what oh. I'm missing here is we, we want to add 10 to this. We want to add line height to this. Oh, for the initial heading? Yeah. Okay. yeah Why am I trying to type line height? Uh, I've used make code before, guys. <laughs> I know how variables work. Cool. Um, and let's do that over here, too. And so um, we just hard coded all of these values here. We now we've got this nice little formula for um, collect uh, or calculating it. So I'll duplicate this and set it to variables. Um, if we had return values, yeah, I was just going to say. Um, <laughs> I would use those. And um, for any eagle-eyed make code um, users, you might notice that we recently um, added return values, um, but they haven't been pushed yet to the release of Arcade. So um, look forward to seeing that soon. Um, Are they in beta? I think they're in beta. Yes, yeah, so if you go to arcade.makecode.com slash beta, you'll see all of our you know new latest features. But you also see more bugs and crashes. Yes. So. Yep. So the reason that we do the stream on the release and the reason that we generally point people to the release and not to beta is that beta can be buggy. Um, that's the point. It's for us to test things out and for people to get kind of a preview of new features. Um, so whoops. And just to confirm, return values are in beta right now. So available there. Cool. Thanks. All right, let's see that. Uh, oh. I have to. I have to change the index. Oh. Oh. Right. Oh, yeah. Hmm. It's the best way to do this. <laughs> uh, to duplicate it, but that would be a pain if you ever have to change the formula again. Um, OK, I'll do it this way. We're going to do it for the first one. So this will be um, equal to top heading this times um, plus line height. So this will be for the top one. Ooh, whoops. And I'm just going to change the offset Okay. By the line height times two. Oops. There we go. Now, for such a small program, we're getting a lot of variables. All right. Dup, dup, dup. Cool. Nice. So 
not only have we made our code a little easier to understand because we took all of those magic numbers that I put in before, the 50, the 60, the 70, which no one would really be able to understand how I got to those numbers or why they're the, the correct ones. Um, and now we have a little formula to calculate it that makes a, a lot more sense um, if you were to read the code yourself. Okay, so now we've got our things all offset. So let's go ahead and create our headings. Um, and hopefully we can finish this up pretty quickly. <laughs> I'm just going to make one called current heading. Uh, that, go into our word category and drag out a create text sprite. And so what's the, so I think we want to start with make a, and then we want to set the position. Or actually, I'm not going to use the set position because I want to use the left in the top. Mm -hmm. uh, or probably the left in the Y. So yeah. set the left. Was that what you're going to say, Joey? Yeah, because top would be offset by eight. Yes. Yeah. So we'll set the current heading left to five, and we will set the um, uh, Y position to line height times uh, for the first heading we just need the uh... I'm gonna make a for loop for this. Oh. So I'm going to create another um, array, and this one's going to be our headings. So we'll have make a. Can you guys hear the rain that's currently happening? It's like raining yeah. really hard outside my window. I hear it, but from outside. So I think we can <laughs> make a colorful. I don't think we need any heading for the second one. Platformer. Yeah, Set in featuring uh, <laughs> the A in make A probably shouldn't be capitalized. Okay, I'll use the for loop. So one thing you need to know about for loops and when you're looping over an array in make code is that um, we go up to and including the maximum value. So this will go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Um, and that can be a little annoying when you're doing arrays, because usually you want to loop up to 1 minus the um, length of the array, um, because otherwise you'll be going above the um, bounds, um, which we don't want. So I'm going to go ahead and drag out a minus, put it in here, do the length of the array text list. Minus one. And I'm going to set current heading to this. The um, text that we want to use is the um, current value of the, uh, oh, not length, the get value at. The current value for the index. So I'm going to use this um, get value at, put it in the text argument. Come on. Why is that one? Oh. Stay close. Um, to gotta change this to text list. Gotta change this to index. So I'm pulling the local variable from our for loop, and I'm gonna set the foreground, uh, the background color to just be 15. It's fine. And then the um, oof, what do we want the foreground color to be? Green. Sure. Okay, I'll do that for now, and then we can change it. So this is going to be the um, top heading offset. Oops. Line height times the index times plus two. Index. Yes. Nice. Yeah. 
Yeah. All right, cool. Awesome. Well, it's not super pretty, but we're kind of out of time now. So um, this is what's going to be for now. Maybe we'll, um, so our plan for tomorrow was to use this to make a game, but because um, I was having a lot of fun doing this, maybe we'll just keep, maybe we'll just pretty it up a bit. Um, we'll talk about it and decide what we're going to do tomorrow. But um, good. yeah, thanks everyone for joining us again for the Make Code Arcade Advanced stream. Um, one more reminder, because this is the last time I get to do it. Um, we have an, a game jam going on right now that Make Code Arcade One Room Game Jam. Um, if you go to our forum, the link is uh, over there. Hey, I pointed in the right direction. Um, <laughs> the, uh, you'll be able to find out all of the information. Um, you have until midnight tonight PST, I think, to um, submit your game. I submitted my game. I know Shannon submitted a game. Um, you guys, yeah. We'll make <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, go ahead and, and submit. It's, it's a lot of fun. Um, and uh, yeah, so I'm Richard. I'm at Richard on the MakeCode forums. I'm Joey at jwondrel on the MakeCode forums. I'm Shannon. I'm at Shakao on the MakeCode forums. I'm Daryl. I'm at Darzu on the MakeCode forums. Yeah, and tune in tomorrow at 1 p.m. Uh, we're here every weekday. So see you later. See ya. See ya.